Okay. Okay. Welcome. Let's see if we're on camera. Yeah, we are. Oh, Welcome okay. to this week's Whole Week Costa. Uh, uh, I'm here with Kev tonight on a Wednesday night. These awkward schedules for uh, for podcasting. Yeah. We're on uh, camera for our second time. The camera's set up a little bit better. Uh, maybe. It's a it's a winter wonder winter wonderland in the background still. Should we keep this all season? I think we should. I don't know. Each like, season we change. Yeah, we. Uh, well, start. next well next season we'll have a real green screen there. Yeah, we should the whole wall. Yeah. Just paint it. Um, so tonight we're drinking. Uh, oh shit. Which Sorry. We're drinking uh, Flying Fish Redfish. It's uh, it's a local beer out of Somerdale, New Jersey, which is by the uh, Cinemark. Cinemark is one of the best movie theaters there around. It's about uh, probably 15 minutes away from me. Uh, and they have $5 Tuesdays. And then they have like real cheap matinees. So it's kind of like coming into this podcast, like... I was hoping to be one of those podcasts that just like takes off in random direction because I mostly have complaints right now and that's not interesting for anyone. Yeah. Um, so the only thing I really had to talk about was um, <clears throat> I watched uh, I watched the special about Michael Bay that I thought was pretty awesome. Oh, the financial Michael Bay <clears throat> story. No, it was actually no, it was actually like a movie critic guy. Oh, it was it about how much of a jerk he is on set and like how uh, how he does like all this crazy stuff to people so so funny michael bay story so so there's there's epic rap battles of history about and it is initially it's um steven spielberg and alfred hitchcock is like who who's that's who is in the title that's who starts it and but i, I think it's really funny because um then it goes from them to like a few other directors and that ends with michael bay and Michael Bay, the Michael Bay part really reminds me of somebody that I work with who, like, is sort of, we make, like, a fast-talking, like, money-making sort of guy. So, and, and the and that's, like, the Michael Bay part's about, like, how basically he doesn't give a shit and he, like, signs his checks with his nuts and stuff and, like, he's just about making making the money. Um, I think he has a line, like, 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 like you know, he's going to teach everyone this business about the motherfucking money. Um, but it's a wrap, so it's awesome. But anyway... So since then, I've always kind of liked Michael Bay <laughs> um, because I kind of like the I kind of like obnoxious people. Um, You're an obnoxious person. Yeah. So well, I like people who know what they are. So so like the I, and, and I don't know if Michael Bay's really like this, but in the epic in the rap battle, he was proud of his obnoxiousness, which is something I appreciate. <laughs> um, Did he actually rap? Yeah. Well, no, well, no. It was you know it was just it was just the guys doing the rap battle, but um, but. Uh, but anyway, so so the so it was this sort of like story about his career, and it talks about how you know he started with music videos. He started with this propaganda films, which are like commercials and music right. videos. That's where he got to start. And they reference one Meatloaf video that he did that has like all the Michael Bay hallmarks. It's like you know helicopters in the sunset and the American flag and scantily clad women and explosions. He, he's totally about America flags yeah, and explosions. Real quick, Michael Bay news. Yeah. Bad Boys Three is coming out. Oh, it's awesome. After fifteen years. Nice. Yeah. But um, yeah, but you know, then it went through some of his films. So when you know, started with like 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 uh, Bad Boys is the first one he, that he that he first major film he directed, and then it was The Rock after that, and they talk about <sighs> The Rock's so good. Well, have you have you ever watched The Rock? I watched it like back then, like when it was when it uh, was a newer movie. I think I watched it like maybe two months ago. Nicholas Cage. Uh, yeah. Then uh, what's his name? Uh, Sean Connery. Yeah, yeah. And there, there's a because he's an MI6 agent. There's yeah. like an ongoing theory, like never, never uh, confirmed or denied. Yeah. That that MI6 agent. Yeah. Uh, Mason is 007. Like huh. we captured him and we were still in a dark hole. But um, which would be a cool. Like if they ever like they were like yeah that's canon. That'd be that'd cool. Be, that'd be awesome. But um. But yeah, so so they talked about how that that's that's like the start. Well, first off, the Nicolas Cage character like that that's like the Michael Bay hero, like the underpowered like weakling who then like becomes stronger as the movie goes on, and how and that movie is the first one where he really does where like he really fetishizes and glorifies the military, but then like, you know, paints like you know smart people and the government as like as like you know weak assholes basically. Right. Michael, one of uh, a small role from Michael Bean. Mm. You know Michael Bean from. Uh, uh, you ever see the original Terminator in the nineteen eighty four one? Not like a long time. Uh, Kyle Reese 
Yeah. 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 And so Michael Bean, uh, he's been a bunch of. I like. When you talk about movies, I'm a B movie guy. Like, I love yeah. B, B actors. Yeah. Like, Michael Bean was in a, a bunch of James Cameron stuff, uh, Terminator, Aliens. Okay. Uh, and. Um, I forget the other one. Terminator, Aliens. I think he was going to be a Predator, but he got replaced. He said B movie, not Bean movie. Not Michael Bean movies. Both. Okay. Both. Yeah. <laughs> B movies and Michael Bean. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like we're similar in that, in that, in that I like, I like the, I like the indie games and you like the, you like the indie movies, sort of, like well, the B movies. The, no, the B actors. Yeah. I'll take B actors from an A, A list, right. because B movies are sometimes terrible. Mm. <laughs> but, um, um, but anyway, so the part I was getting to that I thought was awesome, that I feel like, I feel like we should all use in real life, and this is where Michael Bay's role model is, so after he made, you know, um, Bad Boys and The Rock and Armageddon, where, you know, it was really, like, blowing shit up sort of stuff already by that point. Um, then he was picked to make Pearl Harbor, and essentially... Which is a terrible movie. <laughs> well, the, the reason why is because the movie was supposed to be the next Titanic. It was supposed to be a heartfelt movie, classic filmmaking, supposed to be like a tragic love story, you know, it's, you know it's, obviously the story is a tragedy of all these Americans getting killed, and the story is, they did that for about half a day, and then at lunchtime of the first day on set, um, there's, a, a, this is a quote from like one of his, like, one of his like assistant directors, basically, apparently Michael Bay just went to everyone and said, I don't change my style for anybody, that's for pussies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, yep. No one here is a role model. And then they made, and then they and then they turned it into a, like into like a hero story where they bombed Japan in the end. <laughs> no, that's, that's real. I know that's real, yeah, but yeah. It had nothing to do with Pearl Harbor. Yeah, the the, <laughs> yeah, the Doolittle yeah, Raid didn't have to be raid. included. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah the Doolittle Raid. The movie is an hour and a half at that point. Yeah, where the one guy's like, I'm gonna go fight for the with the RAF. Yeah, and, and then. uh the you know he comes back and he's like well I love your friend and then there's like oh I'm pregnant but who's the father and then they do like the whole doodle like it was over after an hour yeah. and a half and then they do the but but America had to win at the end yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so I got two two quick stories about yeah. that so I was watching something the other night on YouTube about yeah. how uh, when the Luftwaffe went to Britain yeah the, they were too far away and. Uh, Goering, the guy in charge of the Luftwaffe, huh. was like a terrible military person, just like Hitler was. Yeah. So he kept making these mistakes. But the thing is, they would shoot down the RAF, RAF planes mm. over England. Mm. So when they landed, like the planes were shot down, they would just fix them up and send them back up with like a new pilot. Makes sense, yeah. Well, yeah. So it's like basically they lost because they were fighting over England. Like if they fought yeah. like somewhere else, like if they made the RAF come... Basically, if they made the RAF come to them, yeah. they would have lost the air fight. But because they were shooting down over England, yeah. they would just send, like, because England was fighting for home. Yeah. So it wasn't just the people in the military. It was civilians. They're getting these planes and they're hiding all the people. And they never had a, a, a ground, yeah. a ground offensive, so they didn't have to hide or anything. So, like, when, with, over these fights, like, even the civilians go out and they bring the help, bring the planes back and, like, you know, patch up the planes and shit, so. Well, that's, I mean, everything about the Battle for Britain is, is like, an awesome story. Like, from, like, Churchill's speech, I mean, yeah. I mean, I think, I think we talked about it before, where, I mean, basically, I mean, bas I mean, I mean, basically, it's, it's, like, like, it's something out of, like, out of, like, an anime or, like, a video game. It's, like, I mean, he really makes... You know, you know, it's not just the Nazis; like they're the coming darkness. You know, and they're they're the warriors of light fighting them. Basically, I yeah. mean, it's I, I mean, it's like the most inspiring speech ever. And then, and then, and then, yeah, and that's the thing. You know, once they once they started to bomb the civilians in Britain, then right. yeah, they weren't fighting the British Air Force or the British Army; they were fighting the entire country. Right. At right. That and point. then uh, another thing is uh, another reason why they lost so bad was because Hitler actually. Hitler's scientists actually made a jet interceptor. So, like, these jets could fly across the channel, mm. intercept planes, shoot them down, and then fly back. Mm. But he stopped. He's like, nah, that's stupid. Yeah. So, like, he could have had, like, a, a plane that flew 100 miles an hour or more. Yeah. 100 or 2 miles. And, and, like, it would just destroy anything that he came across. But he was like, meh. So, it's like, he made so many dumb mistakes for that. Uh, uh, 
now on the Michael Bay. Yeah. So have you ever been to uh, Universal Studios, I think, or one of those where they have the Indiana Jones ride? When I was a kid, I was. Yeah, yeah. Indiana Jones like eighth ride. grade. So there was a guy I met, and he was at the theater I was at, and mm. he was like, yeah, I lost to that Indiana Jones, but I was his double. So like I mm. worked there for like 10 years, and I was his double in case he needed it off. And the only reason he beat me was because he was a uh, half inch taller. Huh. So then, like, when his, the guy was doing his thing, like, he would be a stuntman for, like, all the movies and everything. Yeah. And he was saying he got into an argument with Michael Bay. Yeah. And Michael Bay, like, yelling at him, and he's real pompous. He's like, he was a real pompous asshole. Yeah. And he's like, and Michael Bay's like, fuck you. Uh, you know, you'll never work in this town again. And he's like, that's why I volunteered at a theater incident. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, like, Michael Bay's like, you'll never work in this town again. And, and he's like, I can't. No one will hire me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this was ten, ten or twelve years ago, but I think that's kind of funny. Yeah, like he was showing us how to do stunts and roles for, like we, he got hired mm. for sword fighting for uh, the show I was in. Okay, uh, dangerous uh, liaisons, like sword fight, and like so it was pretty funny. Like he got hired. He's like, I work in Cinnamonson at a theater. <laughs> So that guy shouldn't like watch the meeting of the videos. Is what, you're, what you're trying to tell me? Yeah, no. So he, he like, would, he would like, like, it. like between like '95 and 2005, 2000, yeah. I guess. Now, mm. Michael Bay did have a lot of power mm. in in Hollywood. Like he would tell people, like, "You're never working again." Yeah. Like he did that with Megan Fox. Like Megan Fox yelled at him, and Spielberg got her back. Mm. And like you can't tell Spielberg you're not, you know, working in this town again. But yeah. he told you know, Megan Fox, "You're never working in this town again." Then. Nothing happened for her for a while, and then she got cast in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by Michael Bay. She has, she has those two thumbs, though. Yeah, gross. But yeah. I think she got loose yeah. plastic surgery. Did she? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, like the rest of her body. Yeah. All right, as long as she fixed the two thumbs. It's real gross. But, um... So, uh, did you go voting yesterday? No. No? I thought about it, honestly. I mean, I, I mean, I, I talked shit on the, um, on the whole week cost a minute about voting, I do think that's true. Um, I, I don't. I don't care who voted. Um, I think. I don't know. I think I'm. I think I'm more and more nihilistic. Like, I don't think. I. I really don't think it matters. I. I. I always go to the to the drawer Mormont quote. You know that the uh, the the common people pray for rain in the summer that never ends. Like, right. Whoever is in power is gonna fuck us over. Like it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't really matter. My issue too, you know, we talked about it before with how I think, you know, Hillary supporters got Trump elected, but it's still true. Like, okay. you know, I think, I think, I think the one side has like a bigoted bully as a president, and the other side are bullies, but also hypocrites who don't know they're bullies. Like, like well, it's not like it's not okay. To, it's not okay to bully Trump supporters just I, because. I agree. You know, well, one of my things is like, it's like I didn't know really how to explain myself to people because I'm a pretty liberal guy. But I hate, like, liberals, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and then the, best, the best way to explain things to people is, like, excuse me, is that I hate when people tell someone else what they can and cannot say. Yeah. But, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, that, you know, you shouldn't say that kind of shit, but mm -hmm. it's, you know, you, you have no right to tell someone that they can't think it or say it. There's consequences on either side. Let them deal with the consequences, but let them say what they have to say. Like, if you're a racist, that's not cool with me, Yeah. but I'm not going to stop you from saying it. That's what I mean. That's what. That's where I'm at with this bullshit is, like, if you're a racist, fuck you, you're an asshole, like, don't talk to me. But if you're a guy who goes around and, like, beats up racists, fuck you, you're an asshole, don't talk, don't to, talk me. to me. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. Like, it's like it, like it's not, like, it's not, it, like, it, it doesn't make you cool or righteous because you bash a Trump supporter. It just makes you an asshole, too. Yeah, well, what's it called? Uh, I, I always believe in this. If you, like, you, you go to your house, you own your house, mm. you want to be racist, misogynist, uh, hate the color purple, I don't care. Yeah. You shut your door, you do whatever you want. And I've said it a million times, do whatever you want. Yeah. But on the streets, just zip up your mouth. No one wants to hear it, yeah. right? And I also don't want to hear someone yelling at you about you being racist, you yeah. know? So it's just like, when you leave the street, just mind your own business. And if you want to argue with someone, just, that's fine, but be respectful. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what it is. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I honestly, I, I was, like, I like, I like the idea of voting... 
Um, a couple things held me back. One, I remember I got a thing in the mail last year that I hadn't voted in so long that I needed, I needed to re-register if I didn't send the, the thing back in. <laughs> I don't remember if I did. So, I mean, I mean, there's, I think you can easily look up whether you are or not, but I was just busy work and never did it, which is like a bad excuse, but it's, it's true. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then I honestly didn't know who was running. Like, and again, I mean, there's places where you can sort of find out information, right. but I don't trust any information. Right. Like, I, I like... I don't know if someone if anyone watches this video, like leave a comment about what, who has unbiased information because right. I I don't I don't know that it exists. My friend at work he said that he thinks it's as dangerous to ignorantly vote as it is to vote. That's what I think. I would have never really voting. Yeah. Um. Oh yes. Yeah, so I I just from the whole cost Instagram. I just liked somebody's Instagram post about that about about it was it was it was I, I think it was I think it was I think it was your brother's friend Casey posted about you know if uh um you know you know you know how, how many people voted yesterday they have no idea who they were voting for like be honest right. and, and it's definitely true right. i don't know or 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 where people went and were just like oh you can't uh, gotta stop trump's power i'm gonna vote all democrats some of the democrats are assholes yeah well like, I, didn't I, don't vote, know. I didn't vote for the senate race because yeah. i didn't want to vote for uh the democrat i didn't want to vote for the republican guy because i don't believe in him yeah and i and I didn't want to vote for the Democrat guy because he's under investigation for having, uh, I think it's either rape or statutory rape with yeah. a 16 year old. Like he was under investigation. Like that's not a good guy. Like I don't want him leading my country. And then they're both like over 60. So it's like, they're not really going for like people my age or my kids or whatever. Yeah. And then the one guy, I think it was a Hugo the guy who got defeated. Mm. He spent, 24 million dollars of his own money not wow country contributions of his own money yeah. to win and he still didn't win like what kind of asshole does, does that yeah and what are you doing running for office with 24 million dollars like you you don't understand you have 24 million dollars you have more power than a senator yeah because you can grease that senator's palms sure a hundred thousand dollars yeah think sure. about it you have more power if, if you give every senator, if you gave every senator a hundred thousand dollars to vote the way you want, mm. they'd probably vote for you. Yeah. Plus the other hundred thousand dollars from they're getting from other parties. Twenty-four million dollars makes you twenty-four million dollars and still have money. That makes you more powerful than a senator anyway. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. So I didn't um, vote. I didn't vote for senator. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I'm you know, I don't know if there are any city races, but I mean, I'm a Republican in a major city, so like my 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 local races don't matter to me. Like I, they're all lost. Yeah. Um, and and uh, and and the biggest joke is the Repu is the Republican mayoral primary when that comes up, because like it doesn't matter. <laughs> like that guy's gonna lose. Yeah. Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, and then uh, there was a Congress race. It was between some guy and this guy Andy Kim. Yeah. I voted for Andy Kim. Yeah. Because. Like, I liked some of the things he said, but like they're like he messed up on his taxes. He's like I messed up on my taxes. Like, yeah. I would, like that's the only dirt they could find on him. He said he served overseas. He didn't serve overseas in military fashion. He was like an assistant to someone, but like he was like a waiter overseas. Yeah, he yeah, like, served basically. overseas. Yeah, yeah. But, like basically, uh, like he was a civilian that like went overseas to help out, mm. and he messed up on his taxes. Like he claimed his like. DC residents yeah. on his taxes or some shit like that, and I'm like, that's it. And you're like, well, I'm gonna vote for that guy. He doesn't have that many skeletons in yeah. his closet. I mean, like all the attack ads are like bullshit. I mean, like, so stuff like that that like who cares? Like, like, like stuff that any other person would make the mistake of any other person. Like, who cares? You know, I hate the ads where like, oh, this person voted against, you know, against welfare for children or something. You know, because. Because, you know, a lot of those times, if you look up what the bill was, it's something like it was some terrible bill and there right. was this one good part wedged in yeah. and the person voted against the whole thing. So then they attack ads and be like, oh, this person hates children's and minorities like <laughs> because he voted against this thing that you don't even know what it is. Right. It, it is terrible. Like you really do have to be informed. Like, yeah, like uh, for the presidential election, people got like I lost a friend over it. Mm -hmm. Because I voted for Gary Johnson, yeah. and your vote could have went to Hillary Clinton. She like, still would have lost. Yeah, she a she still would have lost because New Jersey is a blue state anyway. Mm -hmm. Always has been. She won New Jersey still. Yeah. But like, I don't want to vote for her either. 
Yeah. Well, and I didn't want to vote for Trump, so I voted for someone who I believed in. Yeah. Well, no. We, I mean, you go point where we're talking about back then was yeah. you know the, the the idea that if those if those third parties get enough votes in any election that they become yeah. real parties in the next election. Right. So I mean, that's not nothing. Yeah. But like his thing was about expanding medical care of marijuana. Yeah. And like I've seen the children that have been helped with seizures that mm-hmm. are helped by like the vapor, the marijuana vapor, like yeah. they they increase it. So until you see, like my sister had seizures, until you've seen how violent and devastating that is to a family, mm-hmm. you know, just my own business, you know. Yeah. So, but yeah. I, I just think the elections, like, like I think it's Congress, Republicans still, I think, no, Senate, Republicans still control Senate. They actually gain more control in the Senate. Yeah, they gain more control, and then uh, Congress is controlled by. Uh, Democrats, yeah, which is like a good balance, which is which is pretty cool. It just means for the next two years nothing will happen, which is fine. Right. It's probably better if nothing happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's better. Yeah. It's better than everything getting passed. Yeah, so so that's fine. I think it was a good outcome. I mean, I mean, I think you know because I don't know. It, it's it's always good and bad when one party has too much power. You know, you don't you know Trump so bunch of a wild card you don't know what he's going to do so it's probably yeah. good if he has a little some more checks and balances but then i also didn't want their the democrats to like really win and pat themselves on the back and think they're not assholes so like you, you get a little bit of both like the democrats still know they're assholes because they couldn't win and pick up any senate seats but yeah. Trump gets checked a little them, more you know, yeah. yeah but that's the thing like democrats like like, I'm looking at the results today. I'm like, come on, guys. You, like, fucking stuck your foot in your mouth again. Like, you guys suck. Yeah. You guys are the worst party ever. Like, you lost seats in the Senate. And then people don't want to vote for you because you guys are such pompous assholes. Yeah, that's it. And that's really what, that's all it comes down to. Like, I'm not a Republican, but I'm like, I don't know if I can vote Democrat. Yeah. You know, so it's like, it's like crazy because I'm like, I'm not a rich white person. And they always put down the rich white people. But, like... Democrats act like they're smart rich white people and, and Republicans are like like men of the earth rich people. You know? Yeah. But they're all assholes. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. A few days ago somebody was at, talking about Trump. It was it was actually a girl I work with that's Canadian, so she's like, I can't vote him, I'm not American. But she's she says something about Trump and I was like, honestly, I don't like him, but I make enough money that I benefited from his tax cuts, so like I did not. So I don't care. I don't care what happens. Yeah. I don't know. So just like it's the way like people educate themselves like i probably could have found this out if i really want to look mm. but like going for my mba like you see how tax cuts like actually hurt the country yeah i think well well, well i think kids are bullshit because anyway, from what i understand of them they're actually gonna you're, you're we're actually gonna pay more in taxes in a few years it, it was like just a it, it, it was really a scam like like he temporarily lowered the taxes but then they're going to go up faster than they would have otherwise. So, like, in a few years, we're actually going to be paying more taxes, but it made him look good to start off his term. Yeah, but that's the thing. Like, when you lower taxes, mm-hmm. that means the, the inflation... No, not no. sorry. The deficit goes up, and yeah. then the inflation starts to go up. But then when you, like, raise taxes back up, mm-hmm. people just spend less. So either yeah. way, like, no matter what you do, like, there's no good middle ground... And I think people have to, like, learn that. Like, if you cut ta- taxes, it, it eventually, like, over the long long run, makes the economy worse anyway. Yeah. But then if you keep taxes high in the long run, it makes the economy worse anyway. So it's like there has to be, like, a good balance, you know. There's an epic, there's an epic rap battles, too, from when uh, when uh, it was Barack Obama versus Mitt Romney, which which, which seems like a really long time ago now. I... I, I um, Six years. Yeah. Um, so there's epigraph battles from from that race, where the guy playing Barack Obama refers to his penis as a stimulus package. So <laughs> that's just what made me think. Of. The uh, stimulus package is one of those things that had to be done from yeah. Bush and uh, Obama. Like they both did one. Yeah. Like gigantic. Like they both had to be done because it would have like destroyed the country otherwise. So. Yeah. I don't know, but um, well, the banks would have like seven banks would have like shut down two times in a row. It's because Clinton deregulated the banks, started deregulating yeah. the banks, so people would get away with more, and like you know, it, it's a like the whole thing is crazy. 
on there. It's, it's all legal. The bottom line is that the election's over. My life's different in no ways. All right. So, glad everyone said they're in the boot. Uh, two, Good two, job, guys. Two cool things, so, yeah. which I think, it, it kind of like, like, do you agree with this, that for the last 200 years, it's mostly been like white old men? I mean, I only know about the last, like, 34, but it was, yeah. it was pro- pro- probably that way prior. Yeah. Well, it 100% was. I mean, I'm going to be a, I'm gonna be an old white man eventually, so it's, yeah. it's fine with me. Yeah. But, like, uh, there is a uh, gay Native American woman who, who joined Congress in Kansas, yeah. and people in Kansas are fucking pissed. I mean, she's the best person in five. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, people made a big deal about that. And you're like, yeah. well, maybe she's like, give her a chance. Well, yeah. she clerked for, at the White House under Obama. Mm. She went from like a, like a community college to like a major law school. I yeah. forget which one, like Yale or Harvard or some shit like that. That sounds pretty qualified. Like, she worked really hard. Like, yeah. she came from like a single mother and all this other stuff. Yeah. And I feel like, and people like, people in Kansas, like a woman. And an engine, yeah. and, a, and a lesbian. They might like, be called an engine. Yeah, yeah, like they're very conservative, and they're like, "What? How to do it?" But it's like, well, because you guys just didn't have good candidates. Like yeah. she's probably like, like she came from a poor background. She probably knows what most of the people need anyway. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the best. And then there's another Indian lady or Native American. I think they used Indian in the report this morning. Yeah, uh, that's where I got it from. But like a Native, uh, I think like New Mexico or something like that. And then there was like a one or two Muslim women that joined Congress too. Yeah. And I just think like uh, when you're talking about a country of like 330 plus million people, you definitely at a 435 plus 100 cents, so 535 people that yeah. like make up the House of Representatives. When you're when 535 people are representing 330 million, mm-hmm. I do think you need more demographics than an old white man. Yeah, I mean it's true. I mean, I mean, the, I mean, white people are the majority. So if you want to make a quota, like there should be still more white people than anybody else. Right. If you want to like, you know, make it equitable to the population. Yeah, I think, yeah. Like the majority of like white people is like sixty-five. Yeah, I don't you know. know. Yeah, I don't know what the number is, but yeah. yeah. But I think also women, it's fifty-one forty-nine. Well, yeah, not just yeah. all white guys. It's all yeah. white women too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, so I think the quota should be like, I mean, like. You can't stop anyone from running, yeah. but I think when you get like people that came from more humble beginnings, mm-hmm. like I was talking about the two senators from New Jersey that were already millionaires, yeah. New Jersey's governor's already a millionaire. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it's it's so hard to like like he's like I'm for you guys, and you're like how are you for us? You know, like yeah. where, where did you come from? But I think someone who came from like a single mother and like worked her way through college, you know, to get there, it's like. She represents people a little more than like, yeah, a white guy. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I could ever run for a political office. Well, not like a big one. I, I kind of, I, I think I'm planning on to. I think I want to. No, I think I, I would get, I would get killed in the attack ads. Yeah, really? Oh uh, yeah, I would, yeah, the other stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> here's my attack ad. I'm like pretty, like pretty clean guy, and they're like, do you want? Do you want this guy to be your senator? And it just shows my brother, like, look at his brother. He's like, he's like eating a drink and he throws it on the ground. Yeah. He eats like a bag of M&M's, throws that on the ground, takes out another drink, drinks that, throws it on the ground, burps on someone's face and slaps a baby. Yeah. You know, like, that's his brother. And you're like, why did you ruin this for me, Carmen? Yeah, nah, they would, yeah, and there's, I don't know. Um, he's well, probably gonna watch this like I oh, would we'll never do that and, like does that um, exact thing Carmen is one of the best viewers of the Holy Cost a Minute yeah so um, Grace Buttery Jen yeah. Wolfish <laughs> that's it and this is one other person too who is it she has a black and white profile picture I don't know hey my fellow profile yeah okay well it's probably one of the people you added on yeah so we gotta we gotta get more followers so we do. Um, yeah, I don't know how to. I mean, I mean, we do the hashtags. I don't know how to promote the Instagram people or the Instagram stuff. Well, um, this hashtag you didn't hashtag like podcast or savage or any of that stuff. So, I mean, I, I hashtag a lot of other stuff. Um, 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 this person. Oh, that's Rob's sister. Okay, Rob's sister. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Rob, Rob's sister. Hey, yeah. cool. Hopefully, listen to the show too. And now we got and now we got Jess Gizzle too. 
Yeah. The giz. Yeah. So, so it's cool. So no voting on your end. No. Yeah. Just, yeah. I don't know. I had to make, um, yeah, I did the whole week cost a minute. I, I, I was hoping you weren't, you weren't offended since it was kind of like negating your whole week cost a minute, but that's just how I felt about it. Yeah, whatever. There's yeah. two people to it. There's two people for for an argument. Yeah. You're a Republican. I'm a Libertarian. Yeah. That's how it goes. I mean, really, as a Republican, the best case scenario for our party is if not many people went out to vote. Because yeah. obviously, the people that were motivated were the people trying to get the Republicans out of power. But, um, but it all worked out in the end. Yeah, but you know who's uh, better at that? Republicans. Yeah. Well. I don't know. Somebody posted, uh, and this is this is probably offensive, but I don't think it's like offensive in a way that um, you can get social ostracized for. Um, but it said uh, um, they posted at like five o'clock, like oh the red wave's coming because like everyone's getting out of work, which means all the Republicans are going to vote since they're the only ones that work. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was funny, but a lot of people like bashed him on on my, the Facebook page. My dad was my dad wasn't Republican, but he hated Democrats. Yeah. I think he, he never voted because he hated them all. Yeah. And, and someone like asked him, like, well, why don't you vote? What are you, a felon? He goes, no, just, they're all assholes. And then he goes, you are too. Yeah. <laughs> like, leave me alone. There's, uh, what was I just seeing about? Um, I saw some, there was some hashtag that, like, that I follow, I, like, I looked on Instagram, it was about, it was in, like, some state trying to get um, change the law where like felons like once they're done their sentence and everything could vote again. Yeah. It was like I, mean, I guess they should, right? Yeah. Like, once they've once you pay your debt to society, you should get your rights back. They're still humans. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I, I I don't know where it was, but I agree. Yeah. And, oh, it might have been related to that that um, that that Wham City Comedies guy's dad. Uh, um, um, oh, the uh, uh, Bob Ratcliffe. Bob Ratcliffe. Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing, there's another state that, uh, people got pissed because they went out and they voted, medical marijuana is legal now. Okay. Like, they're going to do that, and, like, people are, like, uh, people are, like, real mad about it. Like, ah, oh, ah, oh, we can't, like, I saw all the things, like, oh, I can't believe we're going to have potheads. Like, it's not recreational. Yeah. It's and, and, medical. Yeah, so you'll have the same number of potheads. Yeah. Just more people will be able to treat their like, cancer pain and stuff. Well, I always thought that, that drugs should be legal anyway, because, but people, people really think that, like, Oh, once drugs are legal, people are just gonna go be druggies all the time. And that's not the case at all. Like, yeah, most people that don't do drugs aren't gonna just start doing drugs. Like a lot of people that don't drink, like they're not just gonna start drinking. Yeah, yeah, because like I mean, like like for me, like I've never done drugs. There's just a stigma in my mind to it. Like, so it's not something I would be, I'd be really attracted to even if it were more easily accessible. Yeah. Um, but um. I'm not saying for sale legally. Yeah. I'm just saying like not illegal. Yeah. You know? Like people, you know, you still like you can still possess a small amount. Like if you have a large amount of it, yeah, it should be illegal. But like if you possess it or like you smoke it in your own house, like a, or whatever it is, like I always believe like it should be okay because most people that are drug addicts like are just gonna be drug addicts, you know. And there's yeah. a lot of people uh, that I've seen on like forums or whatever. Like, they stopped actually smoking weed in Colorado hmm. and a couple other places because... It's not cool anymore. It's not cool. Like, yeah. like part of it was going to go cop weed. Like, oh. that like that thing of, like, going to cop weed. And I'm like, yeah. oh, that's... So, like, use actually went down. And in Portugal, where it's legal, yeah. where they just do drug counseling instead of, like, sending you to rehab and jail and everything, drug, drug use went down. Like, it's a fact. Once you make something legal... Like, a lot of people just stop doing it. Yeah. Well, I think, too, um, you know, and, and like you're saying, like, it's not like weed wasn't a, isn't wasn't available in this country anyway. Right. You know, like, there's examples in history, like, the, like the, the, the opium wars in China. Like, like opium was a new thing in China at the time and destroyed the country um, to the point where they had to, like, you know, find ways to, like, you know, where they had a big war on drugs there, you know, and there's the stories of, like, the British soldiers would take over Chinese forts when they invade it and like there would just be like weed everywhere or like opium well there'd be like opium pipes everywhere basically <laughs> you know and 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 not that this was necessarily the cause but like the soldiers were too fucking high to fight back because it was like a new drug there and people just it took over you know that's not the case in America 
Like, if you want weed, you could get weed whenever. Like, yeah, like, oh, yeah. like I could go get weed uh, right now if I wanted to. Yeah. Yeah, like, within 10 minutes. Like, I could text one guy I know yeah. that knows a guy that can get you anything. Yeah. Like, I, th- I was telling uh, I saw my girlfriend one time, and we were arguing about something. Like, just a jolly argument. Like, yeah. you know, not an actual it's argument. Real, real jolly. Yeah, and I was like... Uh, it, we were arguing about something. I go, I'll go get a gun right now. I'll come back within an hour with an AK-47. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a threat. Yeah. And, uh, but, well, it wasn't. It, well, it was a jovial argument. Just everyone jolly. Yeah, yeah. No, it was like like we were talking about like the ease of getting stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And I go, well, you know, I'll just go get an AK-47 if I want. And I said, you can't get an AK-47. So I text one guy. I go, hey, man. How long do you get an AK-47? He's like, I don't know, give me like an hour. I was like, well, I don't want one. He's like, well, why are you asking? Yeah. What an <laughs> asshole. Yeah. Waste my time. Asking? Yeah. So, yeah, it's like getting stuff isn't hard, yeah. you know. But it's just like, there's no thrill in it if it's like, there's people that actually just do illegal stuff because that's the thrill. Yeah. Uh, uh, so tell me if you agree with this. So, so somebody was talking at work, uh, Somebody got a, somebody was on the phone with a patient, and then they and they afterwards they they said something about like how he like whenever he's making his appointments because he didn't want to like piss his wife off, and so this so is like him being afraid of his wife, and he asked if I was gonna be afraid of Kelly when we were married, and I was like afraid of Kelly now, <laughs> and then and then she said about how her own husband she didn't think was afraid of her. I was like you should just break up now. I was like because yeah. honestly, like guys will do whatever they can get away with. So if he's not afraid of you. He's banging somebody else right now. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to tell you, like that's how it works. Yeah, yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Like not not because of anything, but because when we first met, she knows the code on my phone. So yeah. I, like I can't hide anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you know that's uh, it, it's just she remembered that. There's like she didn't remember we were podcasting tonight. Yeah. She didn't remember I wasn't working out on 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 Monday night. Yeah. But she knows that could she can get on my phone anytime she wants. Yeah. So it's like oh shit. Yeah. Not I said that, not that I would ever hide anything, but like like what can I get away with? Like I can't even lie. I'm a terrible liar. Yeah. Well, that's what. Well, that's why. That's why I said too. I was like. I was like. I was like. Not that I ever do anything really wrong. But if I ever get a little bit out of line, yeah. Kelly, make sure I'm re afraid of her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. It's made it's made very clear. Right. And I don't know what's afraid, but like you're right. Like oh shit, I don't want to get. I don't think it's afraid. Of, it's like oh man, I don't want to hear about that later. Exactly. You know, I don't want to hear about that. Exactly. It's just, and I, I used to say this when I was married that like that like you know I never there was never really a consequence for so like I could stay out all night and then I come and be like oh she can be mad for like an hour or whatever it's not a big deal yeah. so like it was worth. It was worth the going out all night for the for the minimal consequences, yeah. but like that's not the case now. Yeah. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> like there's yeah. like there's really nothing that I could think of that would be worth like the potential consequences. Right, right. So like so so it's like oh, I, don't know. I don't care. What's what's the point? Yeah, and you you know you you see my girlfriend. I'm six mm. inches taller and a hundred mm. pounds heavier. Yeah. But yeah, I don't want to like no, I'm, I'm nope. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's not worth somebody being yeah, yeah, in three days. Like, it's like, what am I afraid of? Like, like, yeah. am I, like, and it's like not that, you know. It's yeah. like, so, like three guys with a knife in a room. I'm like, I got this, you know. It's like, <laughs> like nah. Yeah. Also, I don't like sleeping in a car. You know, that's not. Yeah, like, no. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you should be homeless at this point. So. Yeah. You have, you have extra consequences. Yeah. Well, I mean, nah. I mean, like, I don't like financially. Like, we don't need each other, which is the mm-hmm. best part about our relationship. I think that's. That's like what you need in any type of relationship. You would still be temporarily homeless. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. But I'll, I can stay at the track and turf for forty-seven dollars a night. Yeah, I'll be okay with that. Is that that? Is that that? Um, I always pass by that hotel on Route seventy-three. Yeah, there's two of them. It's like yeah. track and turf, and then it's like a Clover Inn or something. Yeah, Clover Inn. Yeah. That's why I said that's that's why I said I would live if I ever got if I ever yeah, lost yeah, my it's house. Yeah, yeah, two fifty one for a week. Yep, yeah. yeah. I think it's like two forty something for a week now. I think they oh well, if you want the fridge, it's a little more expensive. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so my mom had this boyfriend. Uh, his name is Bill Smallwood. Yeah, right? that's and, that's her for a guy. Yeah. <laughs> He was a, he was a really cool guy. He was a giant man. Yeah. Uh, but she but cheated. small wood. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, he che- she cheated on him. She cheated on every boyfriend she was ever with, yeah. right? She wanted the bigger wood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was she cheated on the guy named John Bigwood. <laughs> Chief Giant Wood. Yeah. Yeah. 
And uh, so he he uh, he was in a, one of those hotels. And he had the fridge and everything. I felt real bad for him because like he had diabetes and all this other shit going yeah. on. So uh, me and my brother and my dad we go up to him and like you know take him out to lunch, talking to him because we found out like he was back in New Jersey. We're like, yeah. well, how'd you get up here? He's like, oh, I took two buses. I was like, well, why don't you usually take one bus? He's like, well, the first one I got thrown off from. And he got thrown off a bus? Yeah. And he's like, oh. yeah. Well, I woke, uh, you know, I was having Vietnam flashbacks. Oh. And, uh, you know, and I was off my medication. And someone yelled. So I grabbed the girl. Like, his hands were giant. Like, his hands, like, legit were, like, <laughs> you oh. know, like, could grab... Yeah. Here, you guys can see this now. This yeah, is, yeah, it's exciting for you. It, like they look like dinner plates. Like they, they grab like when you handshake, they grab like past the wrist, huh. right? Giant hands. He's like, I grabbed the gook hair, the gook girl's hair in front of me, and tried to pull her scalp off. And I was mm-hmm. like, Well, was she like Chinese? No, she was white. But like that's what I saw. Like I like huh. I tried to crush her skull. They threw me off the bus. Yeah. And like he was like three fifty. I was like, Well, did they throw you off the bus? He's like, Yeah, they threw me off the bus, right? So he like, gets on the second one, and I was like, oh, okay. And he, and then, like, we bought him, like, he's like, can you guys buy me some food? I don't have any money. So we all put, like, money together. But we, that girl's watching right now. He had small wood, though. Yeah. And uh, so he, we gave him, like, the extra money to mm-hmm. get into the room with the refrigerator. With the yeah, so we can give him food. So he was insulin. Yeah, so the next day, like, we picked him up to take him back to his sister slash mom's house, mm-hmm. right? And, and he's like, oh. Can we stop for lunch, guys? We I'm real hungry. And we're like, what happened? We got like a pound of bologna and cheese. Like, like he's like, I ate it all. Yeah, <laughs> he's a real man. So, uh, real crazy story. Now I'm thinking about him. I was watching. You ever watch Hamburger Hill? What is that? Yes, that's another one I've seen, I saw one time a long time yeah. ago. Yeah. So there's a scene in Vietnam where like they're going up Hamburger Hill, mm. right, and then. Uh, U.S. helicopters are firing, like, friendly fire, and, like, they get the guy in the head. And I think my dad was watching one day, like, when I was a kid, and I, yeah. I, but it, I, I, remember, I remember part of it. Yeah, like, uh, he he didn't really drink. He drank every once in a while, mm. and he saw it, and he picked up the TV, and he smashed it into the wall, and, like, there's a huge wall, and, he, like, he, uh, he's, remember, he's a big guy. Mm. He grabs, like, the, the front door was open, and he grabbed mm. the storm door, and he, like, broke the storm door, like, it mm. looked like a fucking car crashed into it. He's like, oh, I can't do this, and... And he puts his truck and, and drives up on the sidewalk. And he like leaves and he like goes on a bender for like three days, and like he comes back and he apologizes and he goes, "Hey, I go, hey man, like, what was all that about?" And I was like seventeen or eighteen at the time. And he goes, yeah. "Well, you know, I was going when I was in Vietnam. Uh, me and my brother, uh, we were going up, and a helicopter fired on us. He got shot in the head three times. Wow! I was like, holy shit! But let." You know, like, it was a friendly fire incident. Yeah, like, that's all. And I was like, really? And, like, I looked it up on online, like, newspaper, like, his obituary and shit mm. like that. He was telling the truth. Wow. And, yeah, so, like, he couldn't watch Vietnam movies. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, well, how'd you get, like, how'd you get it? He's like, well, when we got back from Vietnam, I used to smuggle coke back and forth from the south mm. to up here. And he said, uh, he said that he was shooting, uh, a car through the trunk to the gas to blow, gas tank to blow up the car mm. and then the g- explosion gave him a concussion and he forgot about vietnam for 20 years wow well, that's good <laughs> yeah i feel like cars never really explode like that though yeah they, they, they used to huh yeah yeah he said he was shooting uh shooting a handgun into the gas tank until it exploded i feel like mythbusters did a thing on that but it was probably with a new york car yeah no he said that's what it happened and, and there's no reason for the guy to lie to me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, he could be compensating for his small wood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It would probably be small compared to his size, but probably average size on us. Yeah. Yeah, because he was a giant guy. Yeah, true. Yeah. I guess that's tough, yeah. yeah. Well, we picked a girl up on a bus from her head from the back seat, tried to rip her head off. Yeah, so it probably was new for the girl. No, so he's like a giant guy. Yes. Might might have been white or not. So what uh what are the weekend plans for Sam's fourth birthday? Um, because we'll be hearing about this next week. Yeah. Um. So we don't I don't know what we're doing Saturday yet. Um. I think we're going to the movies and stuff. Um. And then su- Sunday we're having a birthday party at the house, which like Kelly's freaking out about getting the house ready and stuff and. 
Um, we don't have time. And then, of course, so we stayed. We've been out late every night this week because you know that that'll help us get ready. Um, but we had a superhero party. Pretty excited. I did order a cheap knockoff Hulk shirt, but I don't think it's gonna be here in time, so I had to order a real Hulk shirt. Yeah, you guys see my thing about uh, Red being Red Skull? Yeah, my nose oh is, yeah. My nose is way too big. It's true. You have to really, you have to really build your face way out with like yeah. makeup first. <laughs> giant, giant head. And yeah. I have hair. I'm not shaving my hair yeah. or my beard. So it'd be real knockoff like Red Skull, like hipster Red Skull. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I said Marvel only, so I don't know if people wear DC stuff to throw them out. Probably. But, I mean, I mean, Mary said she's gonna wear a Wonder Woman thing, so that's fine. Yeah. But. Well, you can't throw. Well, you could, yeah. You physically, you could throw her out, but you yeah. don't want to. She's super nice. Yeah. So, but anybody else? There are like any Batman shit? Like, no. What's out? Yeah. So, uh, what about this christening? So, so that was real annoying. Um, so, so basically, so Kelly's sister's kid is, is she's getting baptized in a couple of weeks. Now she's like, I don't know, six or nine months old now. Like she's like, she's past the point where like you would traditionally get christened. So at this point, it really doesn't matter when she gets like baptized. So everyone's pretty pissed off about it because she decided to do it like right before Thanksgiving. So like, you know, like most of us are going to Disney next month. So we're trying to pay for that. Then there's Christmas. And now we got to deal with this christening too. And Kelly pretty much told her like, I don't want to be the godmom. Like I, I, I can't. I don't mind to buy the dress. Like I don't want the time to do it. Like, I, like don't make me the godmom. <clears throat> so like whether it's just or not, when you think like okay, I want to make somebody else the godmom, but she's still made her the godmom. Which like I guess you can't turn it down. Like I mean, I guess you could, but like you know, would have been like a big thing probably to be like really turn it down. Right. But like it's kind of a jerk move if someone tells you like I don't want to do this. Like I don't, I don't want to be responsible for. It. And they're like, oh, you're doing it anyway. So that was kind of annoying. And is she the godmom of the other daughter too? No, uh, Claire is actually. Oh. So, um, but anyway, so she had a godmom. So, so whatever. So now, like, so, but I mean, Kelly basically said, you know, and if we ever went to South Philly, you get like a three hundred dollar, you know, boutique made like christening dress. She was like, Kelly was like, I'm ordering the dress. I just ordered the dress on Amazon. Like, it'll be here in two to three days. Like. All right. It was like fifty bucks. Like that's all I can do. I told you that's all I could do. Like, um, and then um, so then uh, then we found out Monday that they had to she had to go to this like godparents class. So so again we're, you know, we just saw the time. Like we're trying to get stuff. We're trying to clean the whole house for Sam's party on Sunday, and we basically had Monday night was shot for this godparents class. So, cause then I uh, the church. Yeah, it was it was at the church. It's right around the house, right around the corner from her sister's house. So, then you know, and, and like I was kind of sick on Monday too. So, but I, you know, I wanted to come here and podcast and then go to the gym, like do my normal stuff. By the driver there, and then I and then but then she's like, oh, well, you can just stay at my sister's house probably till it's done. It's probably gonna be like twenty minutes, like whatever. So we get there, and then they're like, oh, we have to go to the class too because the parents. So you're babysitting the kids. Sorry, you feel like shit, but you're babysitting the kids. And the class took like an hour and 15 minutes. Oh, I would have killed myself. So, oh, it was miserable. Um, and then, it, I mean, it was, it, there were some funny things, though. So, like, so, like, so, like, Mila, who's, who's, who's uh, six months younger than Sam, is, like, my favorite, like, niece or nephew, anyway. Um, so, I didn't, so, I didn't mind hanging out with her, but then, like, you know, Emma's still a baby. So, like, I, I don't really like babies. Um... You know, it's gonna be a real problem if we have another kid. I don't know. I mean, but but Kelly likes babies. I like the older kids. So it kind of works out. Um, but but that was kind of funny because then so so I'm holding Emma, who's like you know like like who's like massively overweight for her for her age. She's like a little on the heavy side. I mean, I carry Sam around all the time, so it wasn't that bad in comparison. But still, so it's like past her bedtime, so she's cranky. But like I don't like I don't know her well enough to try to put her to bed. Like she definitely wanted to go on to sleep, and I still had to watch Mila too. Um, so I'm just like carrying her around and then at one point Mila is like, oh, I have to go to the bathroom. So I'm like, oh, we'll just go upstairs and like, if you have trouble, we'll yell and I'll come up. Meanwhile, she's never gone to the bathroom on the regular toilet before. She has like a potty downstairs, which I didn't, nobody told me about. So the Mila yells cause she can't get on the toilet. So I like lift her on, um, Emma just laying on the floor and then, and then, and then she like peed. She was fine. She like was able to wipe herself. So it was cool. So we go in her room, we're like playing with her LOLs, 
Emma's just sitting there. Um, and Mila's a pretty good sister because she was like, oh, you can't give this one to Emma. It has shoes on and she'll eat them. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> like, um, and then, uh, and then like a few minutes later, Mila's like, I gotta poop. And I was like, ah, oh. I was like, okay, we'll go in the bathroom. Like, oh, let me know when you're done. So then she, so, so she goes and she poops. Then she's like, okay, I'm, you know, you know, you know, she yells her, oh, I'm done. So I give her toilet paper. She tries to wipe herself. Like little kids can't wipe themselves. Sam tries to, but Sam has the cleanest poops ever. <laughs> like he never has a smear on the toilet paper. I don't know what he eats. But uh, nothing good. I, yeah, I guess. I, I guess if you just eat French fries and waffles and stuff, you get the cleanest poops. Um, so that's that's our holy constant health tip for the day. Yeah. Um, so so Mila's trying to wipe herself. She had, it was a green poop. She basically just smears it all the way up her back, like trying to wipe herself. <laughs> so then she's freaking out. You know, Emma's in the other room just laying on the ground because she's a baby. So then so then we're trying to figure out. I'm like, I'm like, Mila, are there like wipes anywhere? And then she's like, oh, yeah, Emma has wipes downstairs. So I grab Emma, run downstairs with her. Mila's like, it's gross, hurry up. And then I'm like, well, where are the wipes? And she's, she's yelling out, they're under the table. And I'm like, I'm looking under the table, I don't see them. She's like, it's so gross, find the wipes. <laughs> So then I find him in like the diaper bags. So I run back upstairs. I put Mila or I put Emma back on the floor. We like get all the poop off of her and stuff. But it was like this man here. I'm like, it's so gross. You gotta hurry up. I don't know. So that was my night. That was my Monday night instead of podcasting. Yeah. Oh, rest of your night. I don't know what that's gonna be instead of podcasting. So, but uh, yeah. that's it for this week's whole week, Costa. Whole week, Costa minute. Uh, Tune in to your favorite Instagram. Yeah. I'm going to the gym soon, so it'll be soon. Oh, okay. Uh, 